Hallelujah, hallelujah. As we're all standing, uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. Precious God, we thank you today. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your covering, Lord. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you most of all for allowing your spirit to reign in this house, Lord. We ask that as we go forth, help us to continue to worship you. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Help us to continue to be the men and women of God you've called us to be in this last and evil day, Lord. Don't take your spirit from this place, Lord. What Whatever you do, Lord, continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to cover, Lord. Continue to save, Lord. Continue to bless, Lord. Continue to keep, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, well, I'm back. I'm back. I'm Hallelujah. back. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Ha. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. We are now, hey, bless your name, bless your name, bless your name. Hallelujah. We are, ha, nothing like the presence of God. Hey, bless your name, bless your name, bless your name, hey, bless your name. Yes, we're going to do the responsive reading. It will be found in Proverbs 22, 1 through 9. If you don't have your Bibles, you may look toward the screen. I am the lead, ha. Glory, hey, God is the leader, hey, bless your name, bless your name, bless your name, ha, 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 I, I will be the leader, God, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and love and favor rather than silver and gold, congregation, a prudent man foreseeth the evil, and hideth himself, but the simple pass on at our parish, and are punished, excuse me. My and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Congregation. Train up a child the way that he should go, and when he is old, he shall not have a part from him. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender congregation. Altogether, he that have a bountiful eye shall be blessed. Altogether, he that have a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Amen. 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 We're going to do our statement of faith. We shall read this in unison. Our belief concerning the Bible. Our belief concerning God. Our belief concerning the church. Our belief concerning forgiveness of sin. Our belief concerning salvation. Our belief concerning divine healing. Our belief concerning the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Our belief concerning sanctification. Do we believe it? Amen. 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 Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Praise God. Amen. We're going to continue standing. It's time to give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says there's nobody like our God. Anybody know that there's nobody like God? Hallelujah. You might have a really good best friend. You might have a wonderful family member, but there's nobody like our God. And we came to celebrate that this morning. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Help me celebrate Jesus today. So there's nobody but nobody like our God. Hallelujah.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. You reign, nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Our Lord, our Lord, He reigns. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our Listen, God. Who is strong and mighty? Our God. Seated on the throne. Our God. High above the heavens. Our, our God. God. He is God alone. Oh. Nobody like our God. Nobody can love me. Nobody like our God. 
like our God. Nobody can save me. Nobody like our God. Nobody can raise me. Nobody like our God. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The next song that we're going to lift up today is that he's a way maker yeah. and he's a miracle worker and he's a promise keeper and he's a light in the darkness. Yeah. Hallelujah. My God, that is who you are. That's what we give to the Lord today. We just make that declaration that he's here and he's here to meet all of our needs and there's nobody like him and we worship him for who he is today. This is worship right here. For the worship is in the house. The song simply says, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That's all you got to say to the Lord today. Waymaker, miracle worker, Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, help me sing it. One voice, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, miracle worker, promise, promise keeper, keeper, light in the darkness, light in the darkness, my God, my God, that is who, that is who you are. Come on, all over the building, let's declare way. We make miracle work, promise, promise keeper, keep light in the light darkness. In the darkness. My, God. my God, that is who you are. Come on, let God hear from you today. Come on, let's declare. We make a we make a miracle work, miracle work, promise, promise keep light in the light darkness. in the darkness. My God, my God, that is who that is who you are. Way make miracle worker, miracle work, promise keeper, promise keep light in the darkness, light in the darkness. My God, my God, that is who, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around. He can do it. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, and you're mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, and you're moving in our midst. Can you feel him today? I worship you. I worship you. You are here and you're working miracles. If you need one, just ask for it. I worship you. I worship you. He's a way maker. Yes, he is. Way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh God, come on, say he's a way maker, yes. 
Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. You're touching and delivering. Because yeah. I know what he can do. I worship you. Hallelujah. I worship you. Oh God, you are here. And you're meeting every need. Everything you brought, he can do something about it. I worship you. Hallelujah. I worship you. Come on, help me declare. He's a way maker, yeah. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, if the worshipers can declare that with me, way make, way make, miracle work, miracle work, promise, promise keep, keep, light in the light darkness, in the darkness my, my God, that is who you are. Light in the darkness, my God, my God. That, is who. that is who you are. Come on, we're going to decree what it says, way maker, 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 my God, my way God, maker. that is who, that is who you are. Promise keeper, promise keeper, my God, that is who you are. He's a miracle worker, miracle worker, miracle worker, miracle worker, miracle worker, my God, my God, that is who you are. Come on, let's put it together, everybody, wave Light in the darkness, my God, my God. That, is who, that is who you are. Come on, let's worship the Lord for who he is. Come on and worship him for who he is. He's everything that you need. He can provide everything you, that you need. We worship we you, Lord, you, Jesus. for everything yeah. that you've done and for all that you are. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. says that I am that I am so I am your way maker I am your banker I am your friend I am your lawyer I am your healer I am that I am I'm your miracle worker ask the young lady who plunged off the cliff but they found her alive because God promised he'd be there he was a light in her darkness as we as we go on, I, I tell you, I travel that road every day. First of all, I thank God I've never plunged off the cliff, but I know folks who plunged off the cliff and didn't come back. And all she got so far is a jacked up shoulder. That's because God is a healer. God is a keeper. I thank him for the covering over my life, the covering over her life, the covering over everybody's lives as we travel up and down the road. Don't take it lightly. Think about it. His name is greater than any name on this earth. They call P.T. Barnum the greatest showman on earth. Jesus is a name above all names. They call him El Elohim. They call him El Shaddai. They call him El Roja. They call him El Sitkanu. They call him Jehovah Nisi. All of those things. That banner, that covering, that's that Nisi. I cover you. Hallelujah. You're going in. You're going out. I cover you in your foolishness when you don't even know you need me. He covers you. Hallelujah. Don't take it for granted. The name above every name. I believe right now, um, if, oh my God, if you'd be so kind as to prepare your offering envelopes. And we do have recognition of our visitors from Elder uh, Anthony Henry. Thank you.
morning, church. Uh, we take this opportunity to first of all honor God and His Spirit and certainly give honor to the pastor and all of you which make up this setting. Uh, it's indeed a blessing just to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And we would like to recognize uh, first time visitors. Uh, I do have two registration cards uh, one from Estrella, Estrella Mejia and uh, another from Denise Hamm. If you would stand at this time, we just want to recognize you. Amen, amen. amen, amen. <laughs> On behalf of the Greater Victory Temple family, beginning with the pastor and first lady, and all of the membership here, we want to welcome you to this fellowship. Uh, we are the Church of God in Christ. Uh, we are spirit-led, and we are excited about the salvation the healing, the blessing, the liberation, and all that is offered in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we just want you to know that you are welcome in this place. And we love you this morning, and we want to continue to show you more love, and we encourage you, if you're in the area, to come and see us again. Amen. And you can be seated. Uh, also, uh, we would like to recognize uh, those... Uh, Part of the Niblet family reunion. If you are here, uh, we certainly want to recognize you. If you would stand at this time. Amen. I said one, two, three, four, five. Amen. And uh, we're grateful for you coming out today as well. Uh, the Niblets uh, have been a part of this community and this fellowship for quite some time. And we bless the Lord for you, and we thank all of you for coming out this morning. God bless you. We will now bring to you the choir in praise. Amen. Faithful, 
faithful is our God. Faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. Faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. Faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. Take back what the devil stole from me, and I rejoice today. For I shall recover it all. Yes, I rejoice today. For I shall recover it all. Holy, holy, holy.
declarative song. So make room for your harvest. If you declare it and you decree it and you believe the God that you serve, make room for your harvest. As you as you prepared your envelopes, now we will um, bring up our pastor, uh, Elder Ronald Britt, to take us further in the service. Come on, give the Lord a hand and praise, if you will. Stand to your feet all over the sanctuary. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm taking back everything that the enemy has stolen from me. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Oh, I feel the Lord in this place. I, I decree and declare. Amen. My sons, my daughters, my family, my finance, my health, everything that the enemy has stolen from me, I'm bold enough to go in his camp and take it back. Or do I have any believers in the house today? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're getting ready to have prayer. Amen. And there may be somebody want to come to the altar today and let the preachers and the missionary touch and agree with you today. The altar is now open, amen, for special prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I need the old. I need thee. Come on. Every hour. Oh, Lord. Come on, preachers. I need thee. Oh, Lord. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Oh, he's here. I Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come, oh Lord, to thee. I come because. Today, oh Lord, oh bless my God, me now, my Savior. I come. Oh, I feel Jesus to to thee. Yes, you may pray. Yes. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, here we are, your children. We come boldly to the throne of grace today, seeking your divine presence, your divine face. You said, seek you while you may be found. Call you upon you while you are near. And God, these are those that are in this sanctuary today that stand in the need of you today. You know every need, God, before it was formulated in our body, before it was formulated in our mind. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you touch while we pray. As these preachers and missionaries are laying hands and anointed with all today, God, meet the needs of those that's at the altar. But especially those that's standing in this sanctuary today, have your way right now. In the name of Jesus, God set captive free today. Healed every wounded heart, every broken spirit today. God heal it today in the name of Jesus. Such why we pray, God. Give hope, God. Give deliverance. Give salvation today. In the name of Jesus, stretch out your hand of mercy right now. Say to the Lord, rebuke it today. 
Take your hands off of God, people. In the name of Jesus, say in the blood of Jesus against you today. We plead the blood tonight. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. In the name of Jesus, touch why we pray, Lord. Missionary K, son, not feeling well today, but God, you the God that healeth thee. Touch her now, God. I rebuke the cancer, God. Even the symptoms of the cancer, God. I come against it right now. In the name of Jesus, touch Reverend Lust today. In the name of Jesus, touch his body right now. I decree and declare healing right now. In the name of Jesus, shed the Lord rebuke him. We have the victory today. We walk by faith today and not by sight. We stand on the promises of God today. And we decree and declare victory in this house house today and God we give you praise and we give you glory and we clap our hands and we shout with the voice of triumph because we have the victory come on and clap your hands and open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you tell him thank you tell him thank you it's already done all you got to do is believe it today come on believe it it's already done tell him thank you Come on, tell it, thank you. If you believe it, clap your hands and give God a shout of praise. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. 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 And it's done in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. With the real saints, clap their hands and give God a shout of praise. God has worked miracles in this place. God is doing a new thing even right now. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to bless him. I dare you to give him glory. I dare you to give him honor, saints. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place today. Uh, open your mouth and bless him. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Come on, saints, come on. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough in this house. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. If you believe it, clap your hands and give him a shout of praise. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, 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 thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel a breakthrough in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel a breakthrough in the house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Uh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give the Lord another hand and praise, if you will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, dear hearts, and certainly may heaven smile upon you, but how many know where the Spirit of the Lord is? There is liberty, and you don't have to leave this place the same way you came. In Jesus' name, I greet you.
and divine love of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is the head of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, give us a breakthrough. Ha, ha, my, my, my glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hand in his presence and tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Any way you bless us, ha, we'll be satisfied. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I honor the Spirit of Christ that's in this room right now. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we bless him today and we give him glory, honor, and we certainly give him praise that's due to his name. We honor the assistant pastors, amen, and Ella Lockhart, uh, Ella Sales, uh, Ella Henry, Ella Garnett, Ella Phil Jones, Sister Jones in the absent, they're away ministering to Minister Cameron, amen, to Mother Welch, to our Women's Day President, Missionary Lockhart, to the women's staff, to all the missionaries, to the deacons, the ushers, to our first lady, Sister Angela Britt, give her a hand and praise, <laughs> to all of our visitors and you, the people of God that makes up this setting, to be the blessing just to be in the house of God one more time. God has been good to us, and he alone is worthy of the praise, the glory, and the honor, for there's nobody like our God. There's nobody like our God. He is Lord, and we honor him, and we give do reverence that's due to his name. It is time to worship the Lord and give in. Come on, put those sanctified hands together. Our deacon brothers are coming along with Sister Well with the credit card machine. We'll give our offerings and tithes at the same time. So I'm going to ask that you make two lines in the central aisle of, of the church. Everyone that will be giving today will be sharing today. Two lines in the central aisle of the church. Let's stay in the spirit of worship because I believe God is up to something today in this house. Hallelujah. And though there will be giving credit cards, you can make a line to my left, to your right, behind Sister Webb. Amen. Everybody should have something to give. Amen. To the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The old folks you say you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. Hallelujah. Lift that offering if you have it. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift that we're about to sow into good ground. I pray, God, that those are given today, you will turn it some 30, some 60, even 100 fold. God, I speak life in their finance today in the name of Jesus I speak favor I speak an increase I speak an overflow God I speak a breakthrough in the name of Jesus as we saw today God God we know you're God of your word and you promise to return it and we believe it in Jesus name we pray thank God amen clap your hands as you come and share that seed today as unto the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful Savior. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With heart of thanksgiving. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will, I will bless, bless thee, thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. I will, I will bless, bless thee, O Lord. Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. With, with the heart of, of thanksgiving. I will bless thee. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will, I will bless, bless thee, thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless, bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. 
with, with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee. I Give our listeners a hand, praise. Oh Lord. With thy hands lifted up. With, with thy, thy hands, hands lifted up. And a mouth filled with praise. And a mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving. With, with the, the heart, heart of thanksgiving. Sister Joy and Kennedy is going around with the ready to help. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. With the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee. I will bless thee, O Lord. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. And they continue to give. Missionary Garnett is coming with our routine announcement. Give our hand praise, if you will. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Our youth department this afternoon after our um, morning service will be in our dining room in the kitchen and they are selling some baked goods. They have snickerdoodle cookies and brownies. They have a cream cheese pound cake. They have a, fly, a five flavor pound cake. They have a socket to me cake, coconut pineapple cake and banana pudding, amen. Chocolate cupcakes and I think they have some red velvet and a red velvet cake, amen. So we're asking that you would please go back to the dining room and support our young people, amen. We'd like to say happy birthday to one of our visitors today, Miss Denise Ham. Amen. She's, amen. She's a friend of my brother Hollis Manning. They're visiting from uh, South, Car South Carolina. I believe it's Darlington, South Carolina. So we want to say happy birthday to you, and thank you for coming and visiting with us on this morning. The Greater Victory Temple Church has been invited to attend the Community Missionary Baptist Church this afternoon at 3:30 p.m. for their pastor and wife's fourth anniversary. That location is 401 Pine Avenue in the city of Pacific Grove. Their pastor is the Reverend Samuel Hayes, and so the church has been invited to go. So let's try to all go and support them in their pastor and wife's anniversary. Amen. The Greater Victory Temple Church family is inviting all of you to, all, to our first annual Divinely Chosen Conference. Amen. 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 The conference will be held on July the 27th, 28th, and 29th at the Greater Victory Temple Church. This weekend will be packed with dynamic speakers and topics, including man-to-man -man for men only, and that class will be taught by our own Bishop N.A. Bullock, heart-to-heart -heart with First Ladies, that will be taught by our First Lady Charlene Bullock, sister-to-sister -sister for all the ladies, that will be taught by Evangelist Kathy James, Divinely Chosen will be taught by Evangelist Lillian Thomas all the way from Waco, Texas, and Divine Rights by Evangelist Robbie Wynn Nicholson, and I believe she's from Houston, Texas. The registration is $40 for singles or $70 per, per couple. The registration will include a delicious continental breakfast, lunch, and your conference material. The registration will begin at 8 a.m. on that Saturday morning. Um, to register, you may contact Sister Karen Jones, Sister Deanna McNary, or our First Lady, First Lady Sister Angela Britt. Or you can call the church at 394-2774. And you can also do this by email. The email address is gbteducation1 at yahoo.com. And for more questions or confirmation, please, again, see one of those ladies, Sister Karen Jones, Sister Deanna McNary, our First Lady, and even uh, Sister uh, Melissa Sells. The funeral services for Reverend Charlie Lee Carr Jr. are as follows. The visitation will be held on Thursday, July 19th from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Bayside Community Mortuary located at 1610 Nochebuena Street in the city of Seaside. Funeral services will be held on Friday, July the 20th at 11 a.m. at the Ocean View Baptist Church at 1200 Amador Avenue. Our Wednesday night midweek service begins at 6 p.m. with prayer followed by Bible study and everyone is invited to attend. Please save the date for our Monterey District meeting beginning August the 2nd through the 4th 
We will have a district choir rehearsal on tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. in the city of Watsonville at Mount Olive, Mount Olive Church of God in Christ. So again, that's at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. We're asking for all choir members to please be present on tomorrow evening. This concludes our announcements. We ask that you please govern yourselves accordingly. Then it's time for the word of God. I give myself away, oh Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away, oh Lord. I give myself away. So you can you here I am here I am. here I stand here I stand Lord my life Lord my life is in your hand Lord I'm longing Lord I'm longing to see your desire your desire revealed. Come on, tell him I give myself. I give myself away. Oh, oh Lord. I give myself away. So you, so you can use me. Can you tell him again? I give myself. I give myself away. Oh. I give myself away so you so you can use me can you take my heart take my take my life take my life as a living sacrifice as a living sacrifice tell him all my dreams all my dreams all my plans all my plans. Tell him, Lord, I place him. Lord, I place them in your hand. I give myself, I give myself away. Oh, oh Lord, I give myself away so you can you tell him again? I give myself away, oh, oh Lord, I give myself away, so you can use me. My life is not my own, to you I belong, I give myself I give myself to you. Can you tell him my life is not my own? My, my life, life is not, not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give myself. I, I give myself. I give myself to you. One more time. My life is not my own. Oh, my, my life, life is, is not, not my own. To you I belong. To you I belong. I give I give myself, I give myself to I you. give myself away, I give, I give myself, myself away. away. Oh, 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 Lord, I give, give myself away so you can use me. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We thank you, God, for this word that we're about to, to receive. Pray that you bless this woman of God as she stands behind this sacred desk. Use her for your glory, your honor, and your praise. We bind every fault, find this spirit. We cast the work of the enemy out. But God, let your word go freely in this place. His soul will be encouraged, healed, delivered, and set free. Even someone will receive you as their Lord and personal Savior today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank God and amen. 
our Women Day president is coming to present our speaker, give Missionary Lockhart a hand praise. The Bible tells us that, and he gave some apostles, some pastors, some teachers, some evangelists, and he, his purpose was for the perfecting of the saints, the edifying of the body, that we might be edified, the body of Christ might be edified. And so today we have a speaker in the house in the person of evangelist Gwen Nash. She'll be coming to edify the body of Christ today. And I pray that your heart is, in, is awaiting an expect, expectancy to receive his word. Please, as, as we stand, would we pray inwardly for our evangelist this day, evangelist Gwen Nash. Praise God, everybody. Come on, let's magnify the Lord if you just put your holy hands together. Come on, let's magnify God. Come on, let's lift him up in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, most of us have had children that were at ball games and, and basketball games. So come on, let's give God a better praise than that. Hallelujah. Come on, let's magnify the Lord. Let's give him glory, and let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I'm testing out something. I have some glasses that don't work, so. I'm going to trust God on this one. Anyway. I got a mind to walk right. I got a mind to walk right. Got a mind to walk right every day since Jesus saved me, sanctified me holy. I got a mind to walk right every day. One more time. I got a mind to walk right. Got a mind to walk right. Got a mind to walk right every day since Jesus saved me. Sanctify me holy. Got a mind to walk right every day. Come on, let's praise God. You know, I, I, I'm really from the old school, and there are a lot of old songs in me. Praise God. And I just thank God that they are keeper. As I thought about um, the songs that the praise and worship in the choir sang today, they sang about him being a way maker and miracle worker, promise keeper and light in darkness, that's who he is. And then the choir sung the song, he's faithful. Come on, let's give God praise. And if anybody or anyone that's had that true experience with God, you can relate to everything that's been sung and said up until this point. I'd like to give honor to our pastor and our first lady, uh, Angela Britt, if you would give them a hand praise. Come on, people of God. Okay, I'm going to help you clap a little better today by giving you this testimony. I had a sister at 28 years old who had a massive stroke. And today still can't lift her other hand and give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise. My aunt always told me it's a poor frog that don't praise his own pond. So, you know, just don't praise it because it's you, but praise because it's somebody else. Amen. So i like to give honor to our women's president, uh, Missionary Lockhart and her staff, to our mother, Mother Welch, and Mother uh, McClare in her absence, to our esteemed sisters in the gospel, amen, to the church in its whole, because without you, we couldn't even, you know, really be here to minister to you, amen, to our guests, to the elders, amen, of this lovely church and our minister. We just give God the praise, and then least but not, but least but not the last, I give honor to my husband, John Nash. I thank him for him. Come on, let's give God praise. Let us pray. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I truly come before you as humble as I know how. Not in my strength, God, but in your almighty power. Lord God, I'm believing you right now that you would anoint me and that you would touch me. And that as I hide myself behind the cross, that you would word my lips 
and allow me to speak the things that you've given me to say. Lord, give me not to fear the faces, but to speak what you have given me to utter this hour. See, God, we magnify your name right now because we know that if you don't do it, it cannot be done. So, Lord God, I ask that you would touch every individual that's under the sound of my voice and that you would minister to them in a in a measurable way, that when they leave this place, God, they will leave the better for coming. In Jesus' name I pray. So one more time, if you put your holy hands together and let's magnify our risen Savior. I have accepted a call that demands me or demands a set type of life. From the age of 21, all of my saved life, God has separated me as a type of Nazarite. Meaning there is some things I must take a stand to, to assist others. My sole purpose today is to offer an after the dust settles word. To encourage every heart and possibly provide for those that are in a hopeless situation. God said in Isaiah 55, 5 and 11, So shall my word that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. With that read, I will be ministering to two classes of people today. Those that have never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, and those that desire and need to maintain Christ. I'm going to repeat that one more time. I just want to minister today to two classes of people. is those that didn't even know that Christ died for you, and that you truly have a way and a right to embrace eternal life, and to those who desire and need to maintain Christ, for you have accepted him and must remember that we've got to maintain on a daily basis your commitment and your call to righteousness. Because we are living in the last days, it is important to realize that there has been a major shift within our nation, in our communities, homes, families, in our lives, and in your very mind. Because most of you, if you really be real, you know you're dealing with the mind issue of where you really stand in your life. So as much as you don't even think Christ as your first option, some of you have waited patiently, and then there are others that have not. And we all have to examine ourselves because nobody can look at you and tell where you really are. Because some of us, we carry pretty smiles. Some of us, we do dress very well. Some of us talk even a good talk and are well-educated in what we do. But only you really know where you stand with God. It's a self-evaluation process. Meaning there are those that may have possibly taken matters in your own hands and have shipwrecked your own situation. Now, as we stroll through the few scriptures that I would like to leave with you on today, there are several that I would like to share. These scriptures, if you have pen and paper to write down, that maybe you can meditate at a later time. The first one is Isaiah 1 and 19. And these are scriptures that, as I go through the process of my life, and have been groomed by the Holy Spirit and through very various mentors that God has given me in my life. And sometimes when I have been pressed up against the wall and not really knowing how things were really going to work out in my life, here are a few nugget scriptures that God had given me just to help me maintain and make it through the day. Isaiah 1 and 19, it says, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. So sometimes when I was frustrated and it seemed like my back was up against the wall, the word of God had to remind me that if I'm yet willing and obedient, he promised that I would eat the good of the land. Uh, Psalms 84 and 11, it reads, No good thing 
does the, would the Lord withhold from them who walketh upright? So what I have to do and you have to do is just give yourself a self-evaluation. You know whether or not you're walking upright. You know whether or not you're talking right. But if you walk upright, God said that he would give you, he would not hold no good thing from you. Then if we move on down the boulevard of the 66 books of the gospel, Philippians 1 and 6 says, Be confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you, somebody say a good word, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So you don't have no need to worry because God is going to keep you. He's going to work it out until he returns. Somebody say amen. Then we have 1 Peter 5 and 7. It says, cast all your cares up on him. Care up on him, for he careth for you. John 14 and 1, and it reads, Be, let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe all so in me. Now my thought today is derived from the scripture, 1 Peter 5 and seven where it says cast all your cares up on him for he careth for you and my topic is look at your neighbor and just tell him just cast look at your other neighbor and tell him just cast so our main focus today is casting and relying or cast or rely there are many struggles in personal uh, there are many struggling with personal issues and circumstances on a day-to-day -day basis, if we would be real. For some, these issues and circumstances may have paralyzed your emotions, your thoughts, and very ability to enjoy life. But I stand today to offer relief. It's not money, and it may not even be resolved at this moment or overnight. But all I want to do today is just offer you Christ. Somebody say Christ. Christ. Now reflecting back today at our topic, scripture text, 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all our cares upon him for he careth for you. The word care could be intertwined with the word anxiety, implying childlike trust or ill-grounded security. It is when you have placed your focus or your concern where, or where your interest lies. It is your burden, your worry, where it turns into an anxiety which draws you into a different direction. However, in light of our scripture text, according to the Spirit-Filled Life Bible, co-signed by the late Bishop Clemens and others, Care is uh, described as anxiety or unnecessary anxiety. And that means care is described as anxious or unnecessary anxiety. Have you ever been anxious over something or you're anxiety because, uh, uh, you got anxiety because you really don't know how nothing is going to work out? And so God is letting us know today that what you've got to do in those particular situations is learn to cast and rely. 1 Peter 5 and 7 stating why, why worry and have a spirit of anxiety when our Father has already provided both our daily and our special needs. See, today, I just want to express how important casting and relying is when it comes to living a stress-free life. See, casting or care is another word for focus, mm -hmm. or we focus. So when we cast, we are discarding, you're shedding, and you're getting rid of. I'm going to say that one more time. When you're casting, you're discarding, shedding, and getting rid of. And I remember when I was younger how the, the prophets and the evangelists that came through, and they was telling us to cast all our cares up on the Lord. But what I find that many of us do, we will have our little bag with all of our issues in it. Somebody say amen. And what you do is you take that very bag and you bring it up to the altar. And when you get to the altar, you take that bag and you dump it out right there. And you take that same bag and you fold it up, put it up under your arm. And you walk away so you can collect some more. But God is saying, cast all 
all your cares up on him because he careth for you. You see, the word rely is when you stand, it's when you rest, Believe in or trust in. It's your very belief. Now, what I find, people can tell me some of everything. But what I do is I watch what you do. I watch how you act and how you carry out what you say. Many of us will say that we got faith in God and that we believe in God. But my very actions contradict the very thing that's coming out of my mouth. I'm still talking about casting and relying. So what are you believing in? Do you really trust God? And I've been to a place in my life where I've been so burdened that I couldn't pick them up and put them down because the very thing that orchestrated orchestrated in my mind is not really revelated in my heart. Somebody say amen. See, you can say one thing, but your accent breeds another. 1 Peter 5, 1 through 5, if we could look at that. Verses 1, 2, and 2 is directed to the elders and those in leadership position. Verse 1 reads, The elders which are among you I exalt, and whom also I'm an elder, and a witness of suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of glory that shall, of the glory that shall be revealed. 2021, 22a says, Feed the flock of God which is among you. Then there's also a way of embracing headship. 2B says, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, meaning you can't make nobody do nothing. (laughs) They got to have a willing mind. And I don't care how, how much you fuss. And how much some of you cuss, it ain't going to make no difference because you cannot make anybody do anything. Somebody say, cast and rely. So it's also saying they got to be willing not, and not working for filthy lucre, uh-huh. but r- having a ready mind, meaning that you got, this got to be a mindset that you have. And most of us, we've had to be trained. When we didn't know God, we didn't know how to live right. When we didn't know God, we didn't know how to pray right. When we didn't know God, we didn't know how to pull somebody into our bosom and love them even though we were going through something ourselves. God is saying, you got to learn how to cast and rely. So also as leaders in the church, according to verse 3, it says, neither as being Lord over God's heritage, but being examples of the flock. And it amazes me how folk want to preach, folk want to tell you what to do, but they're not an example. I've traveled near and far, so don't think I'm talking about Victory Temple, but across the nation, in many ministries, there are people that would prefer to preach to you than to live it. There are people that prefer to uh, teach you versus being a good example. So verse 3 says, neither being Lord over God's heritage, but being an example to the flock. we got to be a living epistles that are learned to be read by man. And folk know whether you're living right or not. You can tell them whatever you want to say. But at the end of the day, it's the spirit of God that reveals where we really are. Then as younger in age, or, and I paraphrase that a little bit, then as younger in age and younger in faith. And God had me to break that down because sometimes we can be younger, but sometimes you can be aged but yet young in the faith. And just because we're whatever age that we may be without naming a number, you can listen to somebody sometime. Come on now. And what I used to try to teach women that God had given me an opportunity to minister to, you know, some women are waiting on God to bless them with a husband. There are other women that are already married, but your husband is not saved. So you're waiting on God to do this special work for you, but, and then you're already in God, and he's not in God, and, and you're trusting God to do something. But you've got to be mindful of what you're asking God for. Look at your neighbor and say, be mindful. And if I can give you a sample, example, especially to women that are married and, and their husbands are not saved and then they want them to get saved. So you've been in God already. But when he get in God, when, when you're supposed to respect him as the head of the house, you get an attitude because who is he 
Because, see, I'm the one that's been saved all the time. You better be mindful of what you ask for. Because you've got to give that God-given husband the time to grow and to mature into who he needs to be. Just because you've been saved a long time doesn't mean you're supposed to usurp authority. Somebody say amen. amen. So when you're young, we as young people need to listen to the aged. And even though you're aged, sometimes because you're new at a thing, you got to adhere to those that are giving instruction that already know. Somebody say amen. amen. And then verse 5, likewise you younger. Here it is. Submit yourselves to the elder. Ye all of, of you and ye and all of ye, all of you be subject one to another and be ye and, and be ye clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. So, we got instructions. Looking closer at verses 1 through 5, first, we should observe the persons in whom the exaltation is given. Second observation is a directive to the pastors, to the spiritual guides of the church, to the elders and the ministers of the church to whom Peter is writing this epistle. Just to set the foundation further, the apostle Peter gives particular directives. First, to the elders and the serving el leaders on how they ought to govern themselves. Then to the younger to be obedient and humble. And then for both the leaders and the younger, younger is that what you're supposed to do regardless of what's going on. Yes, you preach. Yes, you live. Yes, you got. But at the end of the day, when people are not doing what you think they ought to do, you still got to cast your cares on God. Amen? Amen? Somebody say, just cast. It is plainly noted that God has an order for us all. He didn't leave nothing uncovered. Everybody has instructions. Somebody say, all. We are not to be overly concerned, but to cast all our cares up on him. So the question of the hour is, after you have been fed by your ministering headship, taught and directed through the word of God, are you really casting all your cares? <laughs> you see, there's a difference in being, concer being concerned or overly worried until you can't sleep at night. <laughs> You see, there's a difference in casting all your cares on God and then chatting and telling everybody that you can tell till all they can see is that there's a high level of anxiety going on in you. But as I attempt to encourage you, look at your neighbor and tell them, just cast. That's all we got to do. <laughs> you see, there is no way to reach back and successfully assist others when your own personal life is not intact. You can't help nobody because you can't even help yourself. Unstable. With schizophrenic, schizophrenic mindsets. Uh -huh. you, 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 you can't even make your mind up if you're in today and, and out tomorrow. But I thank God for being the sole foundation of our hearts. The only one that we can look to the hills and know where our help from from. Because I've made up in my mind I'm going to cast and rely on him that is the true foundation. I just come to give God just a little bit of glory. Because he is the truth, the way, and the life. So once you make up in your Holy Ghost mind, that he is the only one, and that he is the only way, you will just cast. Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> See, when we're overwhelmed with issues, you are spilling over on others. So it amazes me, you know, uh, uh, we're in the church today, and, and in the day they used to teach us, there was some stuff we would never do. Because we were afraid of the fasting and the praying in the word life that our headship had. And there was no way they would enter into the house of God 
high off of marijuana. There was no way they'd walk in the house of God knowing that you just got out of the bed with Jack and John. Y'all better help me up in here. I'm still talking about casting because you knew they had a spirit of discernment. But oh God, some of us haven't been casting and relying on God. We fear the very thought of speaking the truth. So when we're overwhelmed with issues and we're spilling off on others, what you do, you come up in here and then you want to slide by somebody on the pew, but that person with the discerning spirit can feel the weight. They feel the very burden that you're carrying. And it's just like that luggage that you're carrying. You thought you got a little compact size, but it's so big that when you cross them on the aisle, they can't do nothing but fill it. Somebody say, cast all you can. Talking about a spirit of discernment. There are three points of focus that are vital. Living, walking, and serving. Only we can evaluate our own personal behavior. I can look at you and I can say, you look good, you're smiling well, you're smelling good, and look like you're doing all right. But only we as individuals can examine ourselves. The areas that we should have allowed God to cultivate. Now you know you ain't all there. And you know you haven't given it all to God. So he can do everything in you and through you that he needs to do. But only you can evaluate your own personal life. It's important to evaluate. If there is lack of relationship with the Father. This is how we become better examples to others. See, you know, a smoker, and that's what I used to do, you can't quit smoking until you give it to God. And when you give it to God, I don't care what happens, and I'm a witness to that. I've been through a whole lot of stuff in my life. And when God broke that yoke, I don't care how difficult it gets, I don't go back to cool cigarettes. You can blow them on me. I can even go bound for you. But I still don't want to smoke. Why? Because I've been delivered. So when you're delivered, you don't go back and pick up the very thing that has caused you problems. And when you're delivered, you can be a living testimony to other people. Not just in the presence of others. Come on now. It don't mean nothing because you ain't smoking your cool cigarettes before folk. But what about when you get by yourself? What about when you feel like nobody like you and they cast you down and you're all by yourself? Do you go back up and pick up that cool? Do you go back and pick up that blunt? Do you go back up and hook up with that Joe? Come on now. I'm still talking about casting and relying. So uh, it, it don't profit you anything to show me how good you can act before me. But what I want to know is how good can you act when you're all by yourself? I'm still talking about casting and relying. See, the only way you can live this thing by yourself in the dark, as they sung in the song, is that when the lights go out, you still can live holy. When the lights go out, you still sanctify. When the lights go out, you can still give God praise and hold on to the horns of the altar. You see, it's time out for calling on God when we've been hidden and missing. Then we can only call on him. That's when we only pray and show up to church when you want something. But in order to effectively cast all, somebody say all, we must learn how to listen carefully. See, God needs us to know how to move and still hear him. And sometimes you cannot move yourselves out of certain circumstances because of the environment that you live in. However, God can train you to hear and not hear. And see, on some of my jobs, they would play the world and music, but God taught me how to tune it out and have my own Holy Ghost song. And even though they were gossiping about one another, I still learned how to tune it out and still have a revelated word and conversation with God. And I'm still talking about casting all your cares upon him because he cared for you. So we have no excuse for telling God it was my husband 
Lord God, it was the knucklehead children. Lord God, it was my next door neighbor that I couldn't show forth the praise. But I want to let you know that God's got a mechanism that'll make you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet and cause you to realize that this thing you can't handle on your own. But you got to learn how to cast all your cares upon him because he careth for you. Hallelujah. Somebody say all. We must learn how to listen clearly to the voice of God and to his red, red word and to his spoken word. Again, the three points of focus which are very vital, they're living, meaning we must live a life that's pleasing to God. Walking, it is, very, it is the very expression of your lifestyle and your life. So you can tell me whatever you want to tell people. Baby, they know you're real and they know you're not. Matter of fact, some folk know how to live holy that they haven't even accepted Christ better than we do. And they're the very first ones that tell us we out of order. Somebody better say amen. So my question is, why you want to fool somebody? Uh -huh. Why you want to uh, 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 play at? Uh huh. Because you just acting if you're not living right. Come on now. Because see, God got the whole story. He 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 knows he knows everything about you, and he knows everything about me. So walking is the very expression of your lifestyle. It's really your makeup. It's really who you are. And serving. Many times there are those who are called, and, and this one I didn't want to say, but you know something, when you come in the midst of the body of Christ and you got your brothers and your sisters, and you don't want to be telling and telling on nobody, but you know what, I couldn't hold nothing back because I just had to write what he's told me to say. So what he said was, y'all help me. He said, many times there are those that are called, but have went before they have been completely groomed, sanctified to serve with example. I'm going to say it one more time. He said, you may have been caught, but the question is, did you go a little bit too soon because you haven't been completely groomed? You haven't been completely grounded? And the most important part, sanctified. So that you can be a true and living example. See, it does not profit us as leaders to hold a title, to teach, to preach, to pray, if we can't live, walk, and serve with the example. Somebody say, cast off. Well, now to denounce all negative suggest suggestions that the adversary would bring. You see, the devil don't want you to survive. He don't want us to live. He don't want you to be happy. He don't want you to give God praise. So what he does is anything distractive that he can do to prohibit you from giving God the glory. So, see, Satan know he got kicked out. There's no hope for him to ever be in the kingdom with the citizens of the kingdom. So what he does is try to trip you up and cause you not to be among the kingdom of those that have the ability to worship and praise God. So he's, we all know he's no good because he's slick in his actions. Mm -hmm. He does not care about you and he don't care about me because he's like a roaring lion going to and fro, seeking whomever he may desire. Look at your neighbor and say, cover yourself. And that's our problem. We haven't covered. <laughs> you got to learn how to cover yourself. You've been there, and, I, and most of us have been there, and you understand exactly what I'm saying. We have used, or he will use whatever, whomever he can to keep you from casting and giving God all your cares. It's time to make up your mind. For Christ, I'm going to live, and for Christ, I'm going to die. So when we feel like, or when you feel like, you're the only one. And I had to tell my daughter this about some stuff she was going through. I said, baby, you ain't the only one. And not only are you not the only one, but you ain't the last one. Mm -hmm. So look at your neighbor and tell them just cast. <laughs> it's important to explain 
and to remain to us that everyone that has gone or is going through, you, even if you don't want to admit it, and that's most of us, you know that pride get us? I ain't going through nothing. It ain't me. You the very one. So if you really would admit it, God will do it for you. God will do it for me. And, and you know, we have to stop looking at people, trying to measure them up of what you think they are and where you think they're not. You're not God, and you're not psychic. And even the psychics, God gave them a gift that they're using for the wrong reason. It was to be able to be able to prophetically tell, to bless somebody, to be encouraged in the things to come. But when you take that gift that God has given unto you and try to be psychic and have 1-800 numbers and got people calling and some of us are calling, can't even move until we get our read for the day. That ain't casting. That's not casting. That means you call somebody up to get a word. And even people that pray and get before God, you shouldn't be running to anybody wanting you got a word. You got a word. No, get your own word. We all go through, but we go through differently, God said. Peter was an apostle. Did he go through? He most definitely did. An apostle was one of Jesus' 12 disciples, closest of closest disciples, and they went through. Apostles are chosen by, by him, or they were chosen by him in his early ministry to, to spread the gospel after his death and resurrection. These very disciples were recognized or recognized as apostles after his ascension to heaven. As we look closer at the apostle Peter, he was known to have penned the books of 1 Peter and 2 Peter. He was a member of Jesus' inner circle, and guess what? He went through. Simon Peter was the apostle and was forgiven after denying Christ. So I just want to let you know, you go through, you have issues, but at the same token, God still is with us. And then through my study, as it is noted that this first and same apostle Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water for a few minutes, <laughs> and he still went through. So all I'm telling you, I don't care how anointed you are, I don't care how gifted the word is birthed through you, you gonna go through. But what God wants you to do is when you go through, that you learn how to cast everything up on him. Like most of us, the apostle Peter had strengths and weaknesses. He became fiercely loyal once he was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's when you find you can do whatever, whenever, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. He gives you power. He gives you a mindset that you can leap over tall buildings. That's when you got the Holy Ghost. But when you're not filled, we'll subject to do anything. And then his weaknesses, that he was, like most of us, he was familiar with great fear and doubt. He allowed his passions to rule him instead of his God-like faith. Peter not only abandoned Jesus, but denied him three times that he didn't even know this Christ. Yes, our opposition is very severe. Look at your neighbor and say, your uh, opposition is severe. But God has made provision for us all to cast in rely. And guess what? At my closing. When we forget that God is in control, we overstep the limits of our authority. Meaning that we ought to be in fellowship with God and in tune with him so good that you know where your part stops and where he picks up. Now, he's given us toothpaste, and he's given us a toothbrush. He's not going to come down and brush your teeth, baby. That's something you got to do. So the point I'm making is he made provision for you to purchase it, but it's your job to brush your own teeth. And all I'm saying is that as we get into the word of God, and we study it, and we mand it, he lets us know just how far I'm supposed to go. And when I've done all to stand, He's given me the inability to stay in any way because he taught me how to cast and rely. You know, as I talk to, De talk to Deacon Nash about my topic, he began to tell me, yeah, you know, when you cast like y'all fishes, you cast. But I told him, baby, it ain't this type of casting because <laughs> we ain't trying to pull nothing in. We trying to give it all to God. 
and let him work it out on our behalf. Uh-huh, yeah. So, we can accomplish great things when we put our faith in God. This little nugget God gave me as a revelated testimony. I've been dealing with some stuff in my eyes. It's been so much so that I've had to have three opinions or wound up becoming a third opinion. And the third opinion found some things that were very amazing. They found that uh, my operative eye is fighting against my non-operative eye. And because of that, I can't see straight. So if you would walk down this illustrated boulevard with me, looking at the fact if this eye is slapping that eye, cause that eye don't wanna act right. I can't see straight. And some of us are walking around being slapped up side the head, trying to make everybody think it's all right with you, but you just can't see straight. So what they told me is that they found a film on this eye that I have to go back in a few weeks and get them to remove the eye that they have already operated on to do another procedure to get it right. And then, and only then, can they work on the lenses that I need to help me see straight. So all I'm saying is, baby, if you ain't saved, somebody help me. I can't get you right until you get saved. And then we can exercise the word of God to help you be the true example that you need to be when you get it right. You know, you got the weed and the tear. He said, let them all grow up together. And in the end, he's going to be the one to do and to separate. But only God can make and mold us into the will that he desire. And I remember when an individual came to me as a young girl and tried to witness to me that if I went back to smoking my old cool cigarettes, they tried to tell me that when Jesus came, even after I accepted Christ, that I'd still go to heaven. Well, I just want to let you know I didn't believe that. <laughs> and sometimes there's got to be a difference in where we are. And you know what that difference is. So I just want to encourage you, the only way that you can become everything that God wants you to be, that you've got to learn how to be a master in his word. And we were a master in his word and we apply it to our lives, then we can reach back and help somebody else. The enemy in our lives will never cease to stop challenging your faith. Satan is attempting to abort all the good stuff that God has for each and every last one of us. But the main thing is to get to a place in our lives that we're not overburdened with issues and things that have come our way. God says that he knows everything that concerneth you. He said that he come to give us life and to give it to us more abundant. So if he's trying to do that, why would he be trying to kill you at the same time? Not so. So he's working on all of us. In my last scripture, it says, 1 Peter 1 and 7, it says that the trying of your faith, being much more per 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 precious than that of gold that perishes, through it being tried by fire, and that's the part we don't like. You don't understand that your testing is a fire. It's the purging. It's the place where you gain recognition that you're not really where you think you are. <laughs> And there's a place that he's trying to take you to. That it be found unto praise and honor and glory at his appearing, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So in my closing, people of God, you just being tried by fire. But you know, at the end of the day, you will be found to glorious honor. In his presence, let us stand. I just want to say this. If there's somebody here, you know you're going through some things. 
and you just need somebody to touch and agree with you. I don't care how long it's been. I don't even care who it is. But what I found out, if we're afraid to acknowledge, God, I need your help. Lord, if you don't help me, I don't know if I could be healed. I remember I used to go through stuff, still going through stuff, but different things that I used to go through, I would try everything I could. Elder Self, I would pray to God. Matter of fact, I don't know what I was doing because, see, for us, the saints of God, you know, you got it so good, you know, it's just, you just automatically do whatever you do. I'm going to call it like that. But you're really not trusting God. And then we let ourselves get up to here. And then when I get up to here, this is when I want to cry to God. This is when I say, Lord, if you don't help me, I know I, couldn't, I can't be helped. But all the time when I should have went to him in the first place, cash and rely. That's all God wants. Now, he's just saying, I just, I, I, want, I want you to know. I want you to know that I'm right here with you. I'm right here in it with you. Most of all, like the revelation, if you get my book, how uh, the Lord showed me I was in a house and the snakes was all over the place and they were just rolling all up the wall, but they could never go all the way down, all the way up, but they would fall back down. And it was like I was running from room to room. But God showed me, he said, great will your enemy be. He said, but up above, I have you lifted. So God's not trying to kill us. God's not trying to hurt you. All he's trying to do is just love on us. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. for your glory, for your glory. Be in prayer, saints, be in prayer. 